Good morning. Welcome to Grace Presbyterian Church on this winter wonderland of a fall day. Friends, it's good to have you. Thanks for coming out. You made it. You traversed whatever, whatever obstacles that were out there. You didn't hit any other cars. No other cars hit you, and you've made it to church this morning. We're going to sing together. We're all going to sing loudly together. No matter what your vocal qualities are, you're going to join me in song. We're going to join the choir in song. It's an intergenerational Sunday, so Dave is going to make an absolute mess up here with pumpkins, which is why all this is down. Kids are going to be involved. Our trunk or treat has moved inside, so there's a table and treat hallway out there, right? So just join in the festivities. Let's get excited together around all this. And, you know, you could all sit closer to one another. Is that uncomfortable for everybody, right? Like, let's find our own corners and, and, and sit 18 feet away from people. It's fun, friends. Hey, lots of announcements for you all this morning. This coming Saturday, we are having a work day here at the church, a work morning from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. We're going to be throwing lots of stuff away this Saturday is what we're actually doing. We have a big uh, uh, haul-off dumpster that's coming, and we're just going to be throwing stuff out. So if you want your stuff to stay, you better show up here on Saturday so we don't throw your stuff away, right? So... Please come out and volunteer. Next, we are celebrating Veterans Day Sunday here on November 12th. We invite you to bring pictures of the various veterans in your life. You can start doing that next Sunday, and then we will have a table for all of that. Next, on Sunday, November 5th, is a very busy day. We have, after church that day, we are doing an intergenerational pickleball uh, game at 1 p.m., so make sure you sign up for that. Next, we're doing our stewardship uh, annual wine and cheese that evening, or that afternoon, I guess I should say, at 4 p.m., so make sure you come out for that. And then on November 6th, that's a Monday at 6.30 p.m., I am teaching a class, get this title, Science of Complexity and the Spirituality of Reality. So if that doesn't confuse you, uh, then you have no need for that. But if it did confuse you, please come out on that Monday evening as uh, I'll be teaching about that. And then finally, as I mentioned earlier, we do have our table and treat event now. The trunk and treat is moved inside, so please stay around after service and uh, help us out with that. Dave. I wanted to just take a little tour this morning right now, and somebody like Dwight can follow me. We have something new back here. What is going on? We have a table of treats on this intergenerational Sunday, and the idea is that anytime anybody anywhere like Dwight just decided he just got hungry, he's wandering over here. And he's going to cut himself a piece of cake. And oh my gosh, you can decorate the cake any way that you would like it. And I know, I know, <laughs> exactly, exactly. The point is, any time in the service, just get up, help yourself to some treats, and then go back at the table. And every now and then, maybe something will spill. That'll be a nice problem to have, won't it? So invite you guys to come get a treat, all right? Anytime. And someone's got to take the first piece of cake. So that's why well, just go ahead and cut it out so no one feels like they're ruining the cake, okay? That'd be perfect. With that, friends, make sure you pass those attendance pads down the aisles this morning and go ahead and stand for our opening hymn.
Please be seated, except for Kenzie Koppel. Please come direct center. You may or may not know about this little situation here, but we understand you just got your driver's license. Yes, that's huge. Woo. That, if you remember when you got your driver's license, it's a big deal. That really is. And so part of what we do as a church is we walk alongside youth and family and children and any significant milestone or blessing that they're going through, like huge ones like baptisms like we did at the 9 a.m. service and, and little, like, a little bit more minor ones like getting your baptis, uh, uh, getting your, your driver's license. Like We like to celebrate that with you. And so on behalf of this church, who gave a commitment at your baptism that we would walk alongside you in whatever milestones and blessings, we're celebrating this blessing with you. And so we give you this blessing stone and it represents you getting your driver's license and we wanna pray for you and that's it. I promise we won't make you say anything. Okay. <laughs> Put your arms out. Right now we're gonna say a prayer of blessing on all of Kenzie's driving, okay? Gracious, holy, and loving God, we are grateful for Kenzie and the way she lights the candles and the way that she is a role model for younger kids in this church. And here as she is getting her license, God, we know, oh God, that you will protect her, that you will guide her, that she will make good decisions with her driving. So God, thank you for the training that you provided for her through her parents, through school, for the program. And we ask now, God, that you guard and protect her. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Congratulations on your driver's license. Woo. Go back. All right. All right. All right. Let's all stand together and uh, give our grace blessing, if we will, okay? We have lots of kids in the sanctuary this morning. I would love for you to come forward, please. Help us give our grace blessing. And I would love to see all these... Actually, let's kind of stand up here, if you wouldn't mind, because I'd love to see all your costumes. Come right up here, on right here. Yes. What? Well, I don't, it's going to be part of the sermon, the pumpkin is. Yes. Come here. Tell me very quickly. We're going to have to do this somewhat quickly. Land shark. Land shark. Uh, uh, real quickly, tell us what character you are, okay? Are we missing anybody at all? Yeah, we're missing you, Jessica. You got a cute outfit on. All right, we're good. All right. Here you go, here go, Amy. Throw it to me. We'll get... All right, tell us. We'll go from this side to this way. Uh, you are Mr. Landshark? Tim as the Landshark. Right. What? Who are you? Oh, um, I don't know. Safari guy. Safari guy. <laughs> Uma. Uma. I'm Evie, the daughter of the evil queen. Evie, the daughter of the evil queen. Oh, what is it? Omega. Omega. All right. And your friend? Uh, I'm uh, a person from the, the, the movie. The movie Chiefs? Slapstick. Okay, from Slapstick. Good, good. And one last one. Oh, this is going to be good. You didn't know I was going to do this, did you? We have a beautiful galloping, galloping unicorn. All right, that's great. This is all a part of walking alongside our kids. We've got another one. Yes. Come on forward. Tell us what tell us what character you are. Elsa. Elsa from Frozen and Anna. Anna and Kip, you are underneath that choir robe. <laughs> yes, all right. All right. All right, and then Amy's there, part of the costume as well. This is, this is so fun, you guys. This is great. Hey, help me with the grace blessing, will you? Yeah. Here, all together. Here we go. Get our thumbs out. It's all about here, especially on this trunk or treat or table or treat Sunday, uh, especially as we're passing out milestones and blessings. This is all about intergenerational Sunday where together we have grace in me. 
grace in you, grace in all of us. All right, now you all stay during the service, and I'm going to need some help up here later on in the sermon, okay? Later on in the sermon. But just if you do come up to help me, just know you're going to get messy. Uh, you may or may not want to get messy. We'll see. All right. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Greet, it, greet one another with Christ's peace. Before you sit down, be sure to go over to the snack table. Help yourself for anything that you'd like. There's water. You can decorate your own piece of cake. Help yourself, all right? Sometimes we ask ourselves, why do we do what we do? Why are we okay with seemingly amount of a small chaos during a worship service? And, and the answer definitely is, we're erring on the side of our children and our youth and our families that the church is becoming relevant to them. That they feel overwhelmingly welcomed into this space. And so every now and then when like, we're like, I wish we were a little bit more serious and why do we have plastic all over and why do we have things like this? Well, we want to make sure our kids feel so incredibly welcomed. I don't know about you, but I grew up in a church that, uh, you know, you were, it was better for children to not be seen or not to be heard. And if anybody ever had a small amount of like crying out or anything or was disruptive, my, my mom would immediately get up and, and make me go out of the church because it's not appropriate in a serious worship service. And so that, what that means as a kid that I never really attended church. I was always in the nursery. I was always in the Sunday school. And so uh, I like it that we err on the side of let's cr purposely create Sundays, intergenerational Sundays, where our kids feel super duper welcome. I did a baptism earlier in the service. Justin and I did a, a Bryce Petro. And uh, the entire service long after he was baptized, he went like this. <laughs> And he was just kind of adding to my sermon and he was just adding everything in there. His mom didn't get up immediately and take him to the nursery. She felt comfortable with him here. In fact, the entire service was focused on him and how we as a church are walking alongside that family. And so anyway, I'm so glad that you're here today. Uh, sorry for the snow that uh, kind of 
uh, dug into our attendance a little bit, but so glad that you're here in part of our, uh, our Intergenerational Sunday. If you listen carefully, you will see in the, in the anthem that the choir is singing, even in this wild and crazy sermon, you will hear and see some significant, deeper spiritual things that we're talking about. And you'll, you'll go home from this service with a, with, with a little bit more, more serious uh, uh, thing that you can play out in your own life. So scripture passage this day is, comes from Psalm 139. And it's a passage I picked. It may be separate from what we've been advertising or publicizing about what would take place this service. But it's, uh, I changed the scripture passage because of the baptism we had earlier in the service, in, in, earlier this morning. And just a reminder that each one of us were made in the image of God. So often, especially in churches, so often we are shamed into behaving properly. So often the church is the uh, ones that are showing, telling you how guilty you are and that you were born in sin. But we remember in this church and we remember in our own faith that even long before we did some disruptive, guilty things, we were made in the image of God, special, pure, blameless, intricately woven. So receive now this scripture passage as you recall how you were originally made, Psalm 139. For it was you, O God, who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. This is the word of the Lord, and thanks be to God. One of the treats we have this day is to remember that you and I are a lot like a pumpkin. That's one of the main messages of today. You and I are a lot like a pumpkin, and I can't imagine a better way to start out the sermon than to sing about pumpkins. Chris, will you lead us and teach us? Absolutely. Good morning. Thanks for being here. I'm going to put you to work, so you may want to put down the snacks for a minute because I need all of our kiddos to come up I need five pumpkin stations. Let's get you set up here. One. Come on up to where you were before. Okay, you want to be one? Go down there near Pastor Dave. All right, I need more kiddos. I need five, at we least need five. Some more pumpkin volunteers, or 50. kiddos. Come on, come on. All right. Safari man. Mr. Slapstick. Yep. Okay. Same step, same step. Two. We're all going to sing it. And the congregation is going to help us. Okay, we have everybody? At least five. We can double up. That's okay. There we go. There okay. Go. Yeah, scooch on down. Okay, scoot down this way. Scoot down this way. Come on up, shark. If you can, no? Okay. Shark, I, if you want, there's a good spot, and I have choreography you can do. No? Okay. 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 It's not that hard. Okay. All right, let's see. Let's call it, oh my goodness, let's move back this way. We have bigger pumpkins up here. <coughs> All right, let's do, let's do ye three. The three of you are going to be one, okay? Pumpkin number one, okay? You got to remember that. Can you be pumpkin number two by yourself? Okay. Three together? Pumpkin number three? All right. Four? Yeah. Five? Five. Five. All right. Excellent. Okay. Now, I also need some audience participation, and I'm going to teach them their part. Then I'll teach you your part. And Miss Barb and Miss Jessica, I need you in this too. Stay. Yep, you're at your station. No, Barb, stay there. Because you need a long arm because we're going to shut off lights. Yes, okay. You'll see what will happen. Okay, excellent. My song goes like this, and maybe you know it from school. Okay, stay up and listen. Stay up there. Stay up there. Come down. You can come down. One. There you go. Okay, five, and it's, the words are going to be up here. There they are. 
Five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, oh, oh my, my, it's getting it's late. late. And we're gonna hold our face and go, oh my, it's getting late, okay? We, I, I used to do it that we would point to our watch, but we don't wear those anymore. So we're just gonna say, oh my, it's getting late. Getting late. The second one said, pretend, there are witches in the air and we have googly, googly hands, think hands like this, like, ooh, it's a spooky night, like Halloween night, okay? The third one said, we're gonna fold our arms, fold your arms, have an attitude, and say, I don't care, okay? That's all it's gonna be. The fourth one said, let's run and run and run. The fifth one said, big arms, I'm ready for some fun. Oh, man, this is gonna be good, okay? Let's practice that part so far. Ready? Here we go. Five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, there are witches in the air. The third one said, I don't care. Yeah, really go for it, say it. I, yeah. The fourth one said, let's, yeah. The fifth one said, Oh, we are so good. All right, congregation, you ready? Both hands, show me the wind. Ooh, went the wind. Okay, next slide, next slide, Douglas, if you would. There it is, that's us. Ooh, you're the wind. Okay, choir two. Ooh, went the wind. And everybody clap once, I can't do it. Out went the light. Ooh, they're good. And the five little pumpkins rolled out of sight and we roll and at the end when you're finished you can roll back to seats but don't leave yet back to your seats where you were in a minute in a minute okay let's see if we can put all this together lights camera all right gotta sing loud you ready i'm gonna go over here i'll help you everybody sing five little pumpkins sitting on a gate the first one said the second one said there are witches in the air. The third one said, I don't care. The fourth one said, yeah. The fifth one said, I'm ready for the fun. Ooh, went the wind and out went the light. And the five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. Good, one more time, one more time, one more time. Here we go, one more time, here we go. All right, now we'll do the real thing. Now that we know it, here we go. One more time. I don't know, I should stay there with the mic, I think. I can hold it, I can hold it, okay? Here we go. Do we have everybody, kind of one more time? One more, it's a standing ovation. It's kind of a, okay, you don't have to, it's okay. Ready? Five little pumpkins sitting on a gate. The first one said, oh my, it's getting late. The second one said, there's witches in the air. The third one said, I don't care. The fourth one said, the fifth one said, I'm ready for some fun. Ooh, went the wind and out went the light. And the five little pumpkins rolled out of sight. Hooray, let's hear it for our pumpkins. Good job. Doug, am I on? Oh, there I am. Yes, yes. I told you all we're going to sing about pumpkins, and now I'm going to tell you how we are all like a pumpkin. You know, some of you may know the story about a farmer who had a whole pumpkin field, and so there's all hundreds and hundreds of pumpkins just like this one, and the pumpkins were all out in the field, and every time, now this is not like the kind of pumpkin patches you've gone to, the pumpkin, the farmer goes out and he says, well, hello, little girl, would you like a pumpkin? Yes, and so the farmer goes out and picks a perfect pumpkin for that little girl. Perfectly chosen. It reminds us of the scripture passage, you did not choose me, but I chose you. 
and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. So that's something about our Christian faith. We're reminded that you and I are all chosen. I choose you, Val. I choose you, Kathy. Each one of us are chosen by God Almighty. Is that beautiful or what? Yes, and then when God chooses us, God takes us home, and we had a little bit of kind of tough things. Will somebody come help me clean this, this, this field? Somebody come help me clean this pumpkin. Yes, I need, we got a little towel right here. Help me clean it, because it's been, it's been a long time, a couple months it took to grow. It's been sitting in the field, so help, help clean it off, like clean it really well. And so God cleans us up. Whatever experiences we might have gone through in our lives, God cleans us up. And not just one time, not just when we were born, but God cleans us all up. Thank you very much. You want to stay up here with me? All right. So God cleans us up. How nice it is each and every Sunday, each and every day, we can start afresh. We we're brand new. What was that? We didn't clean the whole pumpkin. I know. That's true. We only cleaned half of it this time. It's for demonstration purposes only. Yes. Let me know if you want to change anything about my sermon, okay? Just let me know. Please do, okay. So we get cleaned up. So God chose us, God picks us up and washes us all off. And then he cuts off the top. Uh, I, I, I decided, oh, look at that. That was fast. That was good. That was super good. Cut off the top. And so all of a sudden it's like, Cut, cuts the top off, okay, and then notices that inside there's been some things that have been happening recently inside. Anybody want to come help me get all this yucky stuff out? You know, each one of us are born clean and pure and holy and blameless. We were intricately woven in our mother's womb. So when we came out of the womb, we were pretty darn perfect, but... Life happens, doesn't it? It's kind of a bumper sticker. Don't you see that on the, out there? Life happens. Yes, stuff happens. Yes, I've seen that on the bumper sticker too. I've seen other things on bumper stickers too. Stuff happens. And so what happens is, oh my, some of this stuff gets on us, doesn't it? It kind of gets all over us, doesn't it? Yes. Anybody go on to come help me clean out the pumpkin? Come on forward. Oh, you do? Okay. Well, I, I like just kind of going like this because you know what, though? I have a feeling we're going to get really messy. What we should do is, is guard up. You, I see you already have plastic on. Why don't you put some of these on? Okay. Let's make sure we cover, make sure. Uh, I, I wouldn't want any of this to get... I know. I wouldn't want any of us to get dirty or anything by life. And so let's go ahead. Let's, let's protect ourselves, okay? Protect ourselves. Come here. You guys cover like this, okay? Hold that right there. Protect yourself. Protect yourself from all this stuff that's going on, all this stuff that life has. has oh, there we go. Okay, okay. Oh, I knew I was going to get it back. That's, that's right. That's, that stuff happens. This is what happens in life. Oh, my gosh. Life, okay, okay, and stop. Life becomes a big mess sometimes, doesn't it? No matter how many things we put up to guard ourselves with the plastic or the plastic bags, life becomes really messy. Anybody have messiness in their lives? Yeah, I think we all get messy times in our lives. But then... What God does is he takes all that messy stuff out. There we go. He removes the seeds of doubt and hate and greed and selfishness and messiness, and he cleans us up. He totally cleans us up. How many times in our lives do we need to be cleaned up? And we say to God and we say a, a prayer, it's like, God, I don't know how I'm going to handle this or what I'm going to do. <laughs> the situation we're facing, whether it's a war in Gaza and Israel, whether it's a difficulty we've had in pregnancy, all kinds of things affect us. But we need to be cleaned up by God. And that's what God does for us. Some of you have had many things happening just recently. And we need God to kind of come in and clean our insides out and get a brand new fresh start. And that's what God does. 
removes the seeds from us. And then he carves in us. Let me do this really quick. I just, no, that's all right. I got a special thing. Carves in for us something different. Oh, my gosh, I'm carving so hard. And then God carves for us a different outlook on life, a smiling face. And despite, I have a feeling I still have a whole bunch of stuff on my face. Could that be? Despite that, despite the circumstances, guess what? I'm approaching this day, this moment with a smiling face because I know God will take care of of everything for me. And then last thing, and this is what I'm, I'm lovely, and I would love to get our, our, our nice, wonderful ladies who were in charge of the lights. I wonder if you can remember that once God picks you out and chooses you, once God cleans you up, once God takes out all that stuff that's accumulated inside out of you and gives you a fresh start, and once God gives you an outlook on life that is happy and positive, then God places within you a light. The light of Christ shines within us. You want to turn that one on for me? Oh, let's, let's, take, off, let's take this off for you. Will you turn that one? Just turn that. And then we have a job that God gives us okay. to let the light from within. The light has replaced all the yuckiness, all the seeds and the stuff that's accumulated. And now all of a sudden we have a light within that we can share to the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for your help. Good morning again. Besides all of this fun and festivity, um, today is also Reformation Sunday. And most of you know that if you know the name Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, but Martin Luther way back in the 1500s and know what he did. But we have a song that we're gonna need some help with today. As you can see, we're a little low on singers, so feel free to join in if you know this one. A, for, a Mighty Fortress is Our God was paraphrased from, this, from Psalm 46, and it was written in 1527, almost 500 years ago. Long, long, long time. It is inscribed on the base of Luther's tomb, and it is said to be the greatest hymn of the greatest man in the greatest period in German history at the time. Um, we just wanted to make sure that we're kind of combining it with everything else that is going, to, going on today. And we need you to realize that it's, it's always been a strong hymn. People use it in many different times in their life. But it was written in the days when castles and fortresses were the usual military defense strategy in all of the land. That was the best thing they could do against enemies. And the analogy is that we're, or the metaphor is that we are also going to be put up a mighty fortress and God is our fortress against everything. So we are very thrilled to have Phyllis filling in with us again today. We have James here on cello. We have Walker playing baritone and our choir singing the melody. And if you would like, you feel free to sing along with A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
despite the mess of our lives, we still have a lot to give. In the midst of the messiness of life, we gather together the, the skills, the abilities, the talents that God gave us, the financial resources we use for our lives, and we offer a bit back to God. So I invite our ushers to come forward now for our offering. Gratitude, friends. Gratitude that you can come to church and make a mess. Gratitude that you can come to church and be a mess. Gratitude for intergenerational ministry and worship, kids and teenagers. Gratitude for musicians who are willing to sit here in front of a group of people and play. Play along with all these folks there behind them. Gratitude for Phyllis, who played one of her favorite tunes, by the way, to all of you, right there. Gratitude. On this Sunday, my hope is that you walk out into the world, and instead of seeing crazy roads and crazy drivers, you can look around and see the beauty of a beautiful snow, that first snowfall of the year. Let us stand this morning, friends, and give our thanks out to God. And before we bow our heads in prayer, I do want to let you know that Jim Schneider's memorial service will be Monday, November 20th at 10 a.m. Please keep Linda and the family in your prayers. Let us pray. God, on this morning, 
remind us that just like this pumpkin here behind me in front of all these folks here, that you form us, choose us, pick us on purpose, perfectly, wonderfully, intricately made. And yet over the years, God, we get all this pumpkin guts inside of us. And we ask that in a worship service like this, that you take some of that out and remind us exactly who you made us to be, that you'll send us out in the world with the kind of faces that you carve in us, that you form in us, and that you will shine through us in a world that so often lives in the shadows, a world that's so often where the pumpkin guts just seem to pile on. And God, remind us that when we pray this prayer here in a little bit about your will being done, your kingdom, that we take some of those pumpkin guts out each and every moment that we give daily bread, that we forgive debts and trespasses and sin, when we stand against evil in the world. God, thank you for sending that prayer down through the ages. We lift it up now with these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's finish up with Alleluia. Sing to Jesus.
Now, I'm a guy, so I'm only able to do one thing at one time. But many of you can do two things at one time. And I want you to practice this morning. On Tuesday night, most likely kids are going to be coming to your house, and you're going to be handing out candy. So just practice this right now. Just go like this. You're doing good. See, that's about, my, that's about my style. I can do this. I can do that. But then I want you to do something else while you're handing out the candy. Or if you're a kid, kids, go like this. Kids, go like this because you're going to be receiving the candy. I want you to say in your mind, and we're going to practice it out loud right now, but say in your mind, the Lord bless you and keep you. You see, the idea is this, when you're receiving candy or when you're offering candy, you are also saying a prayer of blessing to all those houses that you go to or all those kids that are coming up to your house. So let's practice out loud, okay? If you're a kid, put your hand out like this. If you're an adult, uh, passing it out, go like this and say out loud, the Lord bless you and keep you. Here we go. The Lord, the Lord bless, bless you and keep you. you. It's that simple. Now do it without the words, but say it in your mind. Friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you all the days of your life. And in the way you live and the way you interact with people around you, when you're at work, when you're at the store, when you're at school, be a blessing to those people around you. Remember, it's the Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed you and blessed you so that you can be a blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.